Hey everybody, Doll with a Dollar here, and today I have kind of an interesting-ish um, DIY project for you guys today. Um, please excuse my hair, I'm fresh out of the shower, but I was getting ready to do this and I thought it would be maybe a good thing to show you guys because I've done a lot of research on this and there's just not a whole lot of DIY projects out there on this. A little bit of backstory. Um, my husband and I and my little boy are going to be going to our first ever NFL football game in September. We've been to many um, college football games before and so far they don't have this policy but if you are an NFL fan and you go to an NFL game they now have this rule that you cannot bring in your normal purse. You have to have a clear bag that is no bigger than 12 by 12 by 6 um, and it has to be clear or you can bring in a small clutch bag that's no bigger than four and a half by six and a half and that can be like you know not see-through but it can't be very big um, or you can bring in a Ziploc bag um, I don't know about you guys, but I'm not real excited about having to take a Ziploc bag to an NFL game. And I have to have a bag. Um, I, I'm not a really major girly girl. Like, I don't, you know, carry around a lot of makeup. And I don't really even wear a whole lot of makeup very often. Um, I don't need a lot of you know, random stuff. I do like to have hand sanitizer because I am a major germaphobe, so I'm definitely going to have to have hand sanitizer. But the main thing is, is that I'm a mom. Um, I'm a mom of a toddler who is not potty trained yet, so he's still in diapers. Um, he just turned to like the day before yesterday. So he's still in diapers. Um, I'm gonna have to have like a sippy cup for him. Even if I have to buy the liquid for it there, he's gotta have a sippy cup. Um, I get he can use a straw, so I guess that's not a super necessity. But there are things that I'm gonna have to take to keep him occupied, like a couple of books and things, because I'm realistic. He's not gonna sit there and watch an entire game. Um, but he may watch like a movie on my phone with some headphones, so I might have to take headphones or Whatever. but I just cannot see myself taking this and also with the 4x6 clutch size my wallet itself is even bigger than that I think um, so I need to make a bag now I have read that the NFL does sell bags you can buy generic ones or um, you know the team that the stadium is at you can buy their bags um, I think they said they're somewhere between five and ten dollars which I guess isn't horrible but especially on the five dollar end but for ten dollars I definitely don't want to spend ten dollars on just a generic little bag that says NFL and we will be going to the Packers game um, in Jacksonville in September so if we bought a bag at the stadium in Jacksonville it's going to be a Jacksonville bag and we're not Jacksonville fans so um yeah, we're going to be making our own NFL bags today. Um, we're making Green Bay Packer ones and New Orleans Saints because we're getting my mother-in-law Saints tickets for her birthday. I will be making a video about that, about how to um, ha give somebody a really cheap NFL gift. Um, that will probably be my next video because we're going to give her this present tomorrow. So I'm going to be making her a bag as well. But I've got a couple of options for you guys because, like I said, there's not a whole lot out there. I did find a few things. The main bag that I'll be using, um, I did find online. It is um, somebody else's design, but I'll be showing that to you. Um, I'll also be showing you a really, really easy no-sew version of a bag that will work fine for just the one game or whatever. Um, and I will also be making a small clutch bag that you can take by itself, or in my case, I will be putting it in my clear bag to hold my money. Um, so yeah, let's get started. I guess I should also mention that even if you're not an NFL fan and for some reason you just want a clear purse, these tutorials may be fine for you as well. For the first DIY, you're only going to need two things, and this is the no-sew version. One is that 
great Ziploc bag that I was telling you about. But if you're like me and you don't want to take the Ziploc bag just like that and you need something to go over your shoulders or whatever, the other thing you're going to need is some duct tape. And I happen to already have a roll of this Green Bay duct tape. And since I do not live in Wisconsin, I got this duct tape on clearance at Hobby Lobby for a dollar. And I've had it for a while now. Um, I got it for my husband one year for Christmas, I think, as a stocking stuffer. So there's plenty of it left. There was a whole bunch of it. And so we're going to be making a no-sew version of the bag with this. Um, so if you don't have a sewing machine or just don't want to deal with sewing something for something that you're going to use one time or whatever, this may be a good alternative for you. The first thing I will be doing is making some shoulder straps. So I'm going, I like to hold my bag like with not very long straps over my shoulder. So I'm just going to be tearing a piece of duct tape off about 24 inches long and I will be doing two of those. I'm not going to measure precisely because I don't think it's that huge of a deal. So I've got my long piece of duct tape torn out the first one and I'm just going to fold it in half. Now I'm going to make another one just like this. Okay, now I have two straps that are exactly the same um, length. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold my strap up next to the front of the bag. And I'm going to tape it down with a piece of duct tape. Don't worry if it looks pretty right now because we're going to fix that in just a little bit. But just... just Tear some off to keep it down where you want it for now. Kind of like pinning it down when you're sewing. Just so you know like where it's going to be. And then do the exact same thing for the other side. The next part is very easy. You're just going to tape over what you just did all around the rim. And there you have it. Besides a really, really ugly um, <laughs> Ziploc sign right here, I'm just going to probably write my name on it or some contact information in case it gets, gets lost. But that's a really, really easy game day bag if you just want something kind of temporary that you'll just be using for the one game. So... That is about the easiest as you're going to get, and that's it for the first tutorial. Now we're going to get to the main bag, which is a little bit more in-depth, and we will be using a sewing machine for it. This next bag is a little bit more um, extensive than the last one, but it's still not going to be very hard at all. Um, here's what you're going to need. You're going to need some clear, um, like, plastic stuff. I bought this from Walmart. And it's like a table covering or whatever. Um, but it was $1.47 for one yard of it. So you're going to need some clear fabric. You're going to need some fabric in the colors of your favorite team. I happen to have some Green Bay Packers fabric left from um, this past Christmas. I made my little boy some Green Bay Packers shorts. So this was free for me because I ordered um, a yard of this online at Christmas time from a discount store. And I don't even remember how much it is, but this is just leftover. Um, this part is optional, but... I feel that it gives your handles a little bit more um, sturdiness. It's interfacing. I got this heat bond, um, heat bond fusible interfacing from Walmart. And this is just also some that I've had left over from other projects. As you can see, it's been cut before. So it's just left over. So this is also free for me because I've already had it. And then you're going to need some scissors or a rotary cutting tool. I got this for Christmas from my mom, and it has been great, um, along with a cutting mat if you're going to be doing a rotary tool, and a tape measure. The very first thing you're going to do is to cut your team fabric in 4 inch wide strips. Now I had to piece my fabric together just by sewing um, right sides together. 
because my fabric was all cut to pieces and I didn't have enough to make it long enough so I just stitched it together and then cut it four inches wide and then you're going to cut two shoulder straps that are 28 inches long you're going to need two of those and then you're going to need one um, piece of fabric that is 38 inches long and it is going to go around the rim of the bag that's going to give your bag the team feel um, because since it's got to be clear there can't be a whole lot on it so this is going to let your bag still be your team colors without going against the NFL regulations um, as I said before you are only allowed to take a bag in that is 12 by 12 by 6 and then your clutch is going to be 4 by 6 we'll do the clutch in a little while but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a piece of this fabric that is 17 inches by 29 inches long so when I have that cut I'll come back and show you okay guys so the cutting of the fabric is going to be by far in a way the hardest part of this whole project because the fabric the vinyl, the plastic, whatever it is, is really, really, really sticky. Uh, it might just be the kind I bought because I just tried to buy the cheapest thing I could find um, that would work. But it's very, very sticky and it sticks to each other. Um, I guess that's the thing. It's not really sticky, but it clings to each other. It's very, very clingy. But I think once you have the bag together, that won't be as bad. I went ahead and cut two pieces of it because I'm going to be making two bags, one for me and one for my mother-in-law. And I still have enough left that I could probably make another two bags for $1.50. So this bag, these two bags are going to be way 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 cheaper than if I had spent ten dollars at the game to buy one bag and like I said I still have enough to make more maybe for other friends or whatever but once you cut your fabric you're going to fold it in half I've already done that because it took a little while to get it all squared up but you're going to fold it in half and then in the very very corners on both bottom corners this is your folded side on the bottom on the folded side you're going to cut a two and a half inch square from the bottom of each corner I'm probably going to do three inch bottom because I don't want my bag to be too big um, I don't think it will be but just to be on the safe side I'm gonna go ahead and cut three inches out of the bottom corner so I'm gonna do that and then we'll show you what okay happened. guys as you can maybe see I know it's kind of difficult to see because we're using clear but I cut um, three inch corners three inch squares off of each bottom corner along the fold line um, the good thing with working with this clear stuff is that it is really easy to see your line so you can get really crisp straight lines when you cut so now what I'm going to do is I'm not going to sew right here yet but I'm going to sew up both sides Okay, I now have the side sewn and I used green thread to go along with my Green Bay Packers. Now what we're going to do is we're going to separate this sticky, sticky fabric. What we're going to be doing is making a square corner. So you're going to flatten out the bottom of that fold and you're going to meet it at the middle of where your side seam comes down and just kind of flatten that out and then you're going to sew straight across there. Okay, when you have the bottom sewn, you're going to have a rectangular shaped bottom and the purse will be able to stand up and you'll be able to see kind of the shape that it's going to be. Um, I should also mention whenever you're sewing the bag, um, I used the, the longest straight stitch that I have and just go really, really slow so that you don't break your thread or rip a hole in the fabric. So now that we've got the basic shape of your purse, we are going to start doing the fun part, which is adding your team embellishment. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make the handles. So I'm going to take my two pieces of fabric, um, the 28 inch long pieces of fabric that are four inches wide, and I'm going to iron some interfacing to them, which will just give them a little bit of strength. So I'm going to do that, and then I'll come back and show you what's next. For this next step, you're going to take the, stri the strips for the handles that you just did and you're going to fold it in half and you're going to press it to give it a good crease. And then 
you're going to unfold it. And if you're using fusible interface like me, it may stick a little bit, but I don't think that's like a huge deal. You just want to be able to kind of see that crease in the middle. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take each side and fold it in toward that middle line and then press that down as well. Once you have that done, you're going to fold it in half again and then press that close because you're not going to have, that way you don't have any raw, raw edges. So you're going to press that closed and then you're going to stitch along the open end and do that to both straps. Next you're going to take that long strip that you cut to be the band of the, around the um, rim of the bag and you're going to do basically the same thing except without interfacing this time. You're going to fold it ha in half, fold the edges toward the middle, and um, then press it closed. Another thing you're going to do is you're going to fold one end of your fabric in um, and fold that close too so that you don't have any um, raw edges and this will be like your finished edge of okay now that you have the boring part done I hate ironing you're going to take your band and you're going to start in the corner of the bag and you're going to fold the um, fabric over and then you're going to sew along this bottom edge all the way around ending with your side that's um, folded. Okay under. guys we are almost done with this mess. I have the rim sewn onto the bag now so the very last thing we're going to do is we're going to pin the straps to the bag and then sew them on. So I'm going to do that, show you what that looks like and then we'll go on to the clutch. Okay guys, so here is the finished product. I think if I had to do this over again, I would use a thicker plastic because working with this thinner clingy plastic was way harder than I expected. But other than that, it was really not that hard of a project. I guess hindsight's 2020. but since this is not going to be like my everyday person, it's just going to be a game day bag, I think that this is going to work out fine, and I saved myself about $9 by making my own. So I'm going to show you guys one more little project where we're going to make a little clutch that's going to be my change purse for this purse. And then whenever I give my mother-in-law her birthday present, you will see the New Orleans Saints version of this. Okay, now for the last part of this NFL project, we're going to be making a little zippered pouch. This zippered pouch is going to hold my money for the game, but you could put anything that you wanted to in it. Um, you could even use this as your purse for entering the game. So what you're going to need for this project is some more of your team colored fabric. Um, this is again left over from a project from Christmas. Some liner fabric. I just have some yellow cotton fabric that I had gotten at a thrift store. I want to say I got this piece of fabric for like 10 cents. You're going to need a zipper and your cutting tools and a ruler. So the first thing we're going to do is the size of this pouch cannot be bigger than four and a half by six and a half. I'm going to be making mine about four by six just to be on the safe side. So what I'm going to do is to cut my fabric, both pieces of fabric, I'm going to cut two of each so that are four and a half by six and a half so that whenever I sew it all together it should be around four by six. Once you have your fabrics closed, you're going to measure out your zipper. So I'm just going to hold my fabric up next to the zipper. I'm going to cut my zipper to size and then I'm going to sew a new zipper stop with my sewing machine. You do that by just sewing over and over again across the zipper and that way your zipper won't fly off. Um, so sew yourself a new zipper foot and then we'll get started with sewing. What do you want, Sally? Okay, now that you have the zipper stop fixed, you are going to put the zipper right sides together with your fabric and then you're going to use a zipper foot to sew right along this edge. Next you're going to take your other piece of fabric and you're going to line up the edge right along 
the other edge of the zipper and the two fabrics will end up being right sides together then you sew right along the top once you have both sides sewed on you can see you have a zipper right smack in the middle so you're going to fold your pieces together to where you can see the zipper on the outside and then you're going to put your liner fabric along the top of that and sew along the edge. Once you have that sewn, it's going to look like your zipper is sandwiched in between the two pieces. Sorry, my little boy. Your zipper is going to be sandwiched between the two pieces. Stop, 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 stop. So then you're going to fold that piece down to where you see the zipper again. And then you're going to put your liner fabric on top of that and then sew across the top. Once you have all of that together, you can put your green sides together and your yellow sides together. And then you're going to sew around the whole perimeter. But you're going to leave a spot right here at the bottom so that you can turn it inside outwards. Then you're going to pull the whole thing right side outwards through this hole. The very last step is to sew the hole closed. So since this is on the inside, I'm just going to sew a straight stitch right across the hole and then stuff it back in the bag and then it'll be done. Here's the final product. It's just a cute little bag. It's not very big. It's hard to believe that this is like the size purse they want you to bring in, but it will be a good size for money. Um, that's why I say like this is the biggest size you can bring in and it's definitely smaller than my normal wallet. So... Yeah, so I hope these were very, very helpful to you guys. Um, the two clear bags and the wallet bag. So if you're going to go to an NFL game, you know, this could save you a lot of money. It just takes a little bit of effort.